Hi guys, welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Dane, and today I'm here in the Soho store and I'm bringing you another recipe and this one I absolutely love. It's a wonderfully heartwarming and comforting recipe for cinnamon buns. Now these are a really soft and pillowy, multi-layered, sweet bread bun with a toasty kind of warming spiced cinnamon and butter filling. They are absolutely delicious. You can eat them in many different ways. You can have them for breakfast, midday snack, tea time snack, warm them up and eat them with vanilla ice cream, which is my favorite way to eat them. So let's get started. We're gonna make a kind of enriched dough with butter, eggs, and milk. And I've already started by warming 135 milliliters of whole milk. Now it's just warm to the touch, it's not hot, and it's going straight into a stand mixer, which will make this recipe a lot easier because we're gonna knead the bread for about eight to 10 minutes, which you can do by hand, but it's so handy if you've got a stand mixer with a dough hut hook attached to it. Next, I'm gonna add some butter. I've got 100 grams of really soft and salted butter going in. So I'm putting all the wet ingredients first. It'll just make it a lot easier to kind of mix the dough together. Then I've got one whole egg, one large egg, which is about 60 grams. I weighed it just in case you don't have large eggs or um, where you are. And then going in with some flour next. Um, this is 300 grams of strong white bread flour. Now, if you can't get strong white bread flour, fear ye not, because I did actually try this recipe out this morning with plain flour, and it works just exactly the same. Um, but do add 150 grams more of flour because it doesn't kind of absorb the liquid as much as this flour does. So that's going straight in. Then next, we've got 40 grams of caster sugar. And then I've got seven grams of fast action dried yeast. Now you can get this readily available in the supermarkets and it looks like this. It's just kind of dried, looks mealy, but it will do magic to these buns. I'm gonna add this straight into the mixer. And then I've got a half a teaspoon of just regular salt. And then we'll pop the mixer on just onto a low speed to just get it combined. It will kind of look a bit like a shaggy dough and then it will start to come together. We'll turn it up to a medium speed and knead it for about eight to 10 minutes. This has been kneading for about eight minutes now and I'll show you what it should look like when it's ready. So if you've been doing this by hand, it might take you a little bit longer. Um, you just wanna do it on a floured surface um, but not too much flour, because then you'll be incorporating more flour into the dough than we need, and it will kind of make the balance of the liquid that we put in, kind of make it out of balance. So what you want to do is stretch the dough like this, and if you can see through it, like that, then it's done. The gluten has developed nicely, and we've got nice strands in there, so the dough is nice and elastic, and we'll pop this onto a little bit of a floured surface and just roll it into a nice neat ball. Just roll my sleeves up for this one. There we go. Just like so. And just kind of gather underneath it and as you're turning it, tuck it underneath and you'll see that the top will become really nice and smooth. So the top is nice and smooth now and it's in a nice ball. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of flour, pop it in a bowl, and we'll pop the whole thing in like that. And that will go to prove um, in a warm place for about 40 minutes. So if you've got an airing cupboard or if you wanna pop the heating on and pop it next to a, a radiator, I'm gonna whack it in the oven because we've just baked some cookies about half an hour ago. So it's still a little bit warm, but you wanna have the oven turned off um, so it's not super hot because then it will kill the yeast and it will affect the rising. So this will go into the oven for about 40 minutes. I have been proving the dough. Well, that dough is proving, but luckily for you guys, I have one like Blue Peter Magic already proved. Now, a little tip on how to know whether your dough is proved or not. If it is overproved, it won't spring back. And if it is underproved, it will spring back too quickly. Got that? So, this dough is proved perfectly because it springs back kind of halfway. That's just a massive air bubble. <laughs> 
But now this is ready, we're gonna leave it to one side and we'll get on with making the filling. It's just really super simple and easy. I've got 130 grams of soft light brown sugar and 80 grams of really soft unsalted butter going straight into this bowl. To that, I'm gonna add two whole tablespoons of cinnamon, which I know might seem like a lot, but we wanna impart a lot of flavor I'll put a little bit extra in there. I put a lot of flavor into these cinnamon buns because that is where the flavor is going to come from, from the filling. And to that, I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Going straight in there. Bish, bash, bosh. And then we'll just pop it under our electric mixer. You could do this by hand and just give it a whip up until it's nice and light and fluffy for about two minutes. been whipping up for a couple of minutes now and it is all ready. I put a lot of cinnamon in there and it went quite dark and it has lightened a little bit in colour but this is what it should look like, so kind of a brown paste but this is packed full of flavour that you're going to want to eat inside a bun in about an hour or so. So we'll leave that to one side and we'll get rolling out our dough. Now you need to flour the surface a little bit because this dough might have a tendency, tendency to stick to your surface, so make sure it's well floured. And then what we're going to do is turn it out and put the smooth side onto the surface. Now, one of these um, kind of dough scrapers are really handy. It's just a piece of plastic um, that you could forge yourself if you wanted to. Um, but it's got smooth sides and it just helps to scrape the dough out nice and easily. So, rolling pin ready. I'll just flour this as well so it doesn't stick and let's get rolling. You don't need to do have a lot of pressure with this rolling because the dough is quite aerated and it rolls out quite easily as you can see. So it's not like a pastry um, that's kind of or a pie crust dough that's a little bit firmer and you need to put a lot more work into it. And I'm just rolling it forward for now just to get it nice and long. And after every couple of rolls, I'm just kind of fluffing it just to get a little bit of air underneath that so it doesn't stick. Because I want to try and avoid adding too much flour to this dough. And I'm just going to turn it around so I can roll it the other way. And I've just picked up, put my rolling pin down onto the dough, flopped a little bit at the end over, and I'm going to roll it over just halfway and then place it down like that. We want to aim to roll this into a big rectangle. Okay, this is all rolled out. It's about a little bit bigger than 30 by 50 centimeters, and it's quite thin, um, but we need to pack all of that filling in, so we need it to be nice and big. So what I'm gonna do here, our filling is nice and soft, so if you, you make this ahead of time, just don't put it in the fridge, because then it will firm up because of the butter in there. And I'm just gonna plop it on in random splodges, and you know that handy tool, get it back. The offset cranked pallet knife. This is gonna help and make our life a lot easier to spread it along the dough without tearing it. <laughs> I've spread all of that delicious, full of flavor cinnamon butter onto the dough and it's time now to fold it and plait it. These are cinnamon buns with a little bit of a twist, literally. So what we're gonna do is take a third of the dough, um, just from one end, and bring it into the middle. And I'm just gonna stretch it out so it's nice and kind of square to the dough. And then we'll do the same with the top end. Flatten that out a little bit. And bring it over like so. So we're just folding it over a third and then another third. And then what we're gonna do is just chop the ends off. Cause you can see with the butter, I kind of didn't go quite to the edge. So we wanna make sure that in every bun we get all of that butter and you don't just get just dough. So then it's time to divide it up. So I'm gonna cut six pieces out of this. Um, so just mark out where you're going to cut those, two, three, four, five, 
six. So I'll make this one a little bit smaller. And you can measure this if you wanted to um, with a measuring tape to be extra precise. But if they come out a little bit different shapes and sizes, don't worry at all. They're all going to be delicious in the end. So I'm just going to chop along here these six pieces like so. And you can see that delicious cinnamon filling kind of oozing out there. It's going to be great. Now we've got our kind of slabs of the dough and the butter in here. Those layers, they look insane. I'm going to get all that flavor, all that flavor. And then to each one, I'm just going to stretch it out a tiny bit. You can do this on the surface so it's a little bit longer. And I'm just going to cut two incisions like this, quite close to the top. And then what we're going to do is plait it. Nothing fancy, just kind of one over the other, like so. There we go. Nearly there. And we're going to take the top end and roll it towards ourselves. And we've got this little knot. How cool does that look? I'm going to do the rest of them. But first, I'll show you the tin I'm going to pop it in. Is this deep dish one? <laughs> These are jumbo muffin tins. Now, I did try it last year. You might have seen it on my Instagram. I made these cinnamon buns. These are a little bit upgraded. I tweaked the recipe a little bit, and we've made them bigger and better, and the quantities are a little bit different. So the dough is a lot softer than before. Um, but I did them in just regular cupcake muffin pans, and they were a little bit small and dainty, but these are a lot bigger. So we'll pop them straight in. This is a non-stick pan, um, so you won't need to grease it, but if you've kind of got one of these pans and you know it's going to stick, spray a little bit of grease spray or put a little bit of butter around so it doesn't stick. Right, get ready doing the next five. All six rolled and in the tin. Now we're going to do a second proof. Same thing, into a warm space covered with a tea towel for about 40 minutes until they've doubled in size. The buns are approved and they have doubled in size. That is how you know that they are ready. And what you don't want to see is um, in the kind of little lines where the cinnamon butter is, You'll see the dough, if it's overproved, you'll see it's kind of um, almost looks a bit, you know, like the inside of an aero bar, a little bit like that. It looks a bit aerated and it's kind of stretched. That is what you don't want because then they're overproved, but these look great. So the final thing to do is just to glaze them and we're going to use some milk, whole milk, and an egg. That's all we're going to do. So just crack some egg into some milk um, and I've got about equal quantities here. Give it a little whisk up, just to break it up. I like to use egg and milk. I think it just gives the best result, to be honest. And also, it makes it a little bit easier because the milk kind of thins out the egg, so it's not as gloopy. Got a little pastry brush, and I'll just brush it on. all glazed and the glaze will just give it a kind of nice little shine and also give the cinnamon buns a little bit more of a golden color as well when they bake. So I've preheated the oven to 185 degrees and we'll whack these in for 15 minutes. These cinnamon buns 
The smell is filling the bakery right now and I cannot wait to tuck in. But we're just gonna do one last little finishing thing. These have been cooling down for about five minutes and I've just got a cooling rack and they come out pretty easily. Ta-da! As you can see, we'll just flip them over. Look at these beauties. Finishing touch is we're gonna roll them in some cinnamon sugar. So I've just got some caster sugar here and plenty full of cinnamon and we'll just dunk them in and give them a good old roll around. And this wee diddy one at the end. Finished. These are my ultimate cinnamon buns and I think the only thing left to do is to tuck in and eat one. I'm gonna go for the steady one. And they're still warm, which is perfect. It's really hot. I'm just gonna go for it. Mmm. Mmm. I love rolling them in cinnamon sugar because it just gives it that extra boost and you've got all those layers in there, so every piece that you take is a little bit different, which we love. And we put lots of cinnamon inside, so this is full of flavor. You get that kind of butteriness from the enriched dough. It's delicious. I really want a tub of ice cream right now to put with this. You may eat them differently. You could slather butter on this. You could, you could even not put cinnamon inside. You could make raspberry ones. I did some raspberry and jam ones, raspberry jam ones. I put some coconut inside. Delicious with anything. You can put Nutella inside. The possibilities are endless. But I hope you enjoy these. I hope you make them. Um, obviously, do all the usual hashtags at me. And I want to see you make these cinnamon buns because you will not regret it. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and become part of the Cupcake Gemma family because we love having you here. And that's it for this week. I'm just going to eat the rest of these and see you next week with another recipe. Bye.